Hello there everyone, it's Carol from the Crafty Emporium. So we've done the front cover bit and the back cover bit, but as you can see, and I'm going to show you the difference, when you first do this, you're like, oh, that's a bit ultra thin, isn't it? Um, don't worry, because by the time you start decorating it up, that's how fat it can become. And this is without any photographs or any journaling pages within it. Um, now, one of the things that I mentioned in the previous video is that when you open this up, this part ends up overlapping a little. All right. Now, even when you fill it up, because you're thinking, well, I've filled it up now, so this is wider at this point. Yes, that's true. But even so, when you open the pages, and it's probably better to show you on this one, isn't it? Come on, use your noddle, Carol. When you open it up, it still overlaps a little. All right. So don't worry about that <clears throat> because it will do it. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do today in this video is I'm going to cover how I did this part here, all right? So you'll need a pen and paper handy um, to just make notes on this. Now then, I've got this as my background, the same as I've got this blue here. And obviously I want some of that to show, so I don't want to cover over the whole of that. So I'm going to cut a piece of black card first and if you've done the same size envelopes as me then obviously it will be the same measurement as mine but you'll need to sort of work this part out for yourself as well because it will also depend on this image that you're going to use too. Okay, now my black card itself and in fact I'm going to make a note myself because I always forget don't I? So that black part itself measures hang on, four and seven eighths. Let me just do a rough drawing and I'll show you in a minute. So that from there to there is four and seven eighths. Okay. And then this part from here to here is six and five eighths so from here to here is six and five eighths all right that's it so far now then because i need that little bit of space to be able to slide this card inside of here i need to add some extra card on the two sides so we've got the black card itself how good am I at drawing <laughs> and we want an extra bit on there and we want an extra bit on there and we want an extra bit on there because we're going to tuck under and tuck under okay but we don't need any extra on the top so on this side I need to add a quarter of an inch and on this side, I need to add a quarter of an inch. And on this measurement, I need to add one quarter of an inch. So that those will act as the, um, the side flaps that will adhere to the cover itself. All right. So I need to have four and seven eighths plus a quarter plus a quarter. Okay, which equals... And I can't always do it that way. So four and seven eighths plus one, two, which is one quarter, and one, two, which is another quarter. So that equals five and three eighths. So so long as I cut it five and three eighths wide, oh well, that was terrible, Carol. Then I've got the right width. Okay, so for the depth, I've got six and five eighths plus that quarter at the bottom which equals, so six and five eighths and one quarter is two notches, so that's one, two. So six and seven eighths is my overall measurement. Six and seven eighths, okay. So the piece that I need to cut is five and three eighths wide by six and seven eighths high. Everyone with me so far? Whew! 
Okay. And again, I'm going to use my black card because I want it to frame the actual picture part itself. Okay, so... Let me move you to the side a little. So I've got a bit of room. So I need to measure six and seven eighths. Six and seven eighths. Chop that bit off. By five and one, two, three eighths. Okay, just bear with. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my score pal and I'm going to crease it at a quarter of an inch. Oop. Come on. I don't like doing it on this side. I prefer to do it over here, but I want you to see what it is that I'm doing. I suppose I could turn it upside down, couldn't I? That might be better, Carol. So, quarter of an inch. Okay, and then I'm going to flip it round, and I'm going to do quarter of an inch again. Oop. Hey, I'm not making a grand job of this. Do it from there. Okay, and then I'm going to do a quarter of an inch on what will be the bottom. Okay, I'm just going to turn it around this way because I just want to redo those and do it on this side. Just make them a little bit more defined there we go that's better okay then i'm going to fold them over now there are only small lips but they are necessary And then when I folded them over, I'm going to open them back out so that I can fold that bottom one up. Okay. So I'm actually now going to cut out that corner where those two fold marks overlap. Now then, what I'm also going to do is I'm now going to go in and cut again, but I'm going to taper it this time, which means just cutting it at a slight angle. And I'm also going to taper at this top edge too, because like I've said on the previous video, we don't want those straight edges poking out the top. Flick them on the floor. The cleaner will sort them out. I don't have the cleaner. It's me. Okay, so now I've done that. I'm now actually going to fold those over again. And I'm just going to use my bone folder to make those crease marks more definite. So I'm doing what's called burnishing those edges down. And that one. Okay, so that's the first bit done. All folded over and ready. All right. So the next bit I want to do is I want to cut out my image that I'm going to use. And I'm going to use this one on the front cover. So put that way up, yeah. All right, so my surface area, not including the flaps bit, 
is four and five eighths. Sorry, four and seven eighths. And I want to cut the image itself one eighth of an inch smaller. So I'm going to cut it to four and three quarter inches wide. So four and three quarter inches wide and the length measurement but again not including those flaps is six and five eighths so I'm going to take an eighth of an inch off there so that makes it six and a half inches so because I want as I say that small black border surrounding it okay So, let me just check something. So, four and three quarter inches. Now this actual image is just over four and three quarters. So if I make my first cut, about there. And then I'm going to trim off this bottom edge just so as it gives me another straight edge to work with. Okay, so I want it four and three quarters wide. Is that right? Always double check. Yeah, four and four and three quarters, yeah. I was second guess myself. And in fact, I was re-watching one of the videos the other day and I've actually I cut the paper too small. No one told me, did they? Cool. Okay, now I want this fairly central. So I can see that the edge of the design is here and here. So if I start from there, I can see that, oh, that is just over six and a half inches. So if I actually cut a bit off the bottom, And then spin it round and put that edge up against the six and a half and there we go again. One, two, I'm guessing that's three, so we'll guess that that's four. Yes, Mrs. Fiskers, can you please sort that bit out? Okay, so we've got that now the right size. So just to double check, I'm gonna lay that on there and make sure that I can see a thin border of the black all the way around. Yes, I can. I'm also going to ink up, sorry, just getting rid of my rubbish. I'm just going to ink up my edges. glue all on the back yes yeah, so I made I made a boo-boo so I printed on the back of the card rather than wasting it because I knew that I was you know one's going to see that bit so, might as well use it up eh it's going to flatten it out again to make it easier to stick okay and then that will sit on there nicely. Thank you very much. And make sure I've got an even border all the way around. Okay, I'm just going to leave that to the side for just a moment. Now the other thing that you're going to need for this is I'm using acetate. You can't see it, can you? There's a piece of acetate there. And because I'm going to cut this out, I want the acetate on there so that it protects the photograph or image that I've got underneath. This is, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to lay my acetate on there. And I'm afraid you won't see this with the acetate being clear, but I've got 
I've got the edge of the acetate here, all right? So it's not the same size as the oval, it's over here, all right? So that it extends beyond, and it, it will extend height-wise and at the bottom and also on this side. So I'm going to cut my acetate. Now it doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be stuck on the back. And I'm going to turn it that way so that I can then cut this piece off here. So I've now got a piece of acetate that extends beyond that oval centre. All right. Now at this point, you could use um, a die cutting machine and place your die on there and run it through your die cutting machine so that you've got a nice oval shape. Sorry, I need a slurp of tea again. There we go. The only oval dies I've got are scalloped ones. <laughs> Can you believe it? So, I also thought, well, it's a good way of showing you how I would do this. But I'm just going to poke a hole in the centre. So that if you haven't got a die cutting machine, you can't then go like, no, I can't do it because I haven't got a die cutting machine. So I'm going to start cutting in a spiral. Now, I'm using my small scissors, not my big ones. And I'm going round in a spiral until I get to this outer edge and then I'll cut round it. Okay, now then, as I cut round it, I'm actually going to go fairly slow. Because I want to make sure that I've got a nice even cut. In fact, I might even snip it. As you can see, I'm just doing small cuts so then they become nice and even and I end up with a nice smooth edge. Now obviously die cutting it would give me a much neater finish. I haven't got one. It's all gowned. This is a little bit jaggy D. There is something you can do. So if you get an emery board and use the soft part of the emery board, you can just go along and file it. Alright. The other thing that I'm going to do is I am just going to ink the edge up which will also help to just cover up a little bit of those rough edges. Now I'm not doing it on the, the actual image, I'm doing it more on the card, and I'm just running it round. So it now gives it that little inner black border. And then the other thing that I'll do once it's stuck in place is I've got a gold metallic pen. So I will actually go over that gold metallic edge around there. Okay, I've lost my acetate. Okay. So I'm now going to turn it over and I'm going to place, and I don't like this stuff, just a personal thing, don't like it. I don't think it likes me very much either. But I'm gonna stick, where's my end? There it is. Uh, let me stick it on there, see if I can see it better. Yeah. So I'm gonna stick it around the four sides. No, I'm not. I'm sticking it around three sides, Carol. Which will be the side and the side uh, 
and what will be the top. Still need to stick the bottom bit down. And the less I have to use this stuff, the better. As I say, me and it, we're not friends. And this is the bit I don't like. So if I just burnish those down, because even with my pricking tool, if I try and flick those corners off to try and lift this red tape up, it takes me ages and I don't like it. Okay, let's let's give it a go. <gasps> Ooh, it heard me. It come off really easy. Yep, so it's lifting the whole tape off. Don't like it. Mind you, what do they say? A bad workman always blames his tools. Oh, and I've done it with me pricking tool before where, you know, you watch these people and they just flick up the ends and it comes off lovely and easy. Nah, never does for me. Okay, three pieces off. And then it goes all static. Oh, gosh, I'm a moaning mini, aren't I? Okay, so I want this bit at the top up here that's got the sticky on to be at the top. Because as I say, it doesn't matter so much if there's no sticky at the bottom. And then I'm just going to make sure that that's stuck on there. Look at me, look, being a cheapskate and not getting my my burnishing, uh, my bone folder out to burnish it down. <laughs> Needs must when the devil drives. Okay, so that's all burnished down. Now the other thing that I like to do as well is I do like to add my micropore to the top edge because when you put something in, there's a lip there that it can catch on. And if I put a piece of micropore across the top, it just softens that edge so that there isn't a lip for it to catch on. So now when I put something in, it just slides over the top. All right. The other thing that I would do, <sighs> this is going to show you how bad I am. I'm just going to use my jump pen because I haven't got a cloth. Is I always just polish it first because nothing worse than putting it on sticking it on and then finding you've got blooming finger marks all on the back there we go god i'm so classy all right make sure i've got the front i have and that this is going to go on the front so that's the front carol so i'm now going to turn those slaps under And I put the two side ones down first and then that bottom one down on top and it just helps to make a slightly better area for anything to slip into rather than doing the bottom one first and then the side ones because it can catch then on the bottom one whereas doing the two sides first and then the bottom one it doesn't catch so I'm just putting a thin line of glue on those flaps. Again, double check, yep, right way around. And then I'm going to stick that on there. Now I'm going to stick it slightly further down so that it's not an even space between that and that. This is going to be slightly bigger. But it doesn't want to be massively bigger. There's a step that I've missed out. What a numpty. Before you stick your acetate on, you need to draw around this oval shape. And you'll see why in a minute. Or whatever shape it is that you've got. It doesn't have to be an oval. Okay, so I'll we'll leave that to just set off a bit because we now need a piece of card 
that will slot inside of there. All right. So you need to measure, I've lifted it off now. So you need to measure the distance from here to here and then take some off that measurement so that the card will slide in easily enough. And it needs to be the same depth as this as well. All right. Now the reason why I said before you stick the acetate on, what you do is you place this whole thing on top of this piece of card and just draw around that opening so it means that you know where your photograph will need to sit. <sighs> Forgot to mention that bit, didn't I? All right. And then the other thing that I did was I just punched out a circle, inked it up and stuck it on the top. I did do one on the back as well so that it looks pretty. And then you put your photograph on and then that will slide into there and if you've got it right by drawing round that oval or square or whatever shape it is that you've got before you put your acetate on then your photograph will sit in the correct place okay i'm going to leave it at that for now and uh, i'll see you again tomorrow bye for now <laughs>